The order of operations are essential to our successful math calculations. They are our recipe to follow. Whenever you have something new to cook, you can't get the, the exact meal you're looking for if you don't follow a very prescribed method. That's what we have the order of operations for with math. Otherwise, if we approached it in a different way, we could all come up with different answers and then we'd be left asking, well, which one is right? The order of operations is a four step process. The first operation, um, we, we also refer to the order of operations as PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. Um, and so the first step is to clear out parentheses. And when I say the parentheses, I'm talking about an operation occurring within the parentheses. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents, whatever. It does not just mean I have a number wrapped up inside of parentheses with no operation occurring. That relates to multiplication or just as an organizational tool. We're saying to simplify whatever is going on inside the parentheses to find out what that actual value is. Once we've cleared those out, then we can look for our second step, which is going to be exponents. Now, exponents are a way of showing a base being multiplied by itself however many times the exponential value is indicating. So three to the third power is saying I have a three multiplied by itself three times. So in order to evaluate that, we need to kind of write that out. What does that mean? It's three times three times three. And then we find out, well, what does that equal? Three times three is nine times three is going to be 27. So instead of working the, with this number that we don't really know what it's worth, we need to replace it with what its actual value is. The third step is a combined option. Um, multiplication and division. There, one is not more important than the other. You're going to be multiplying or dividing as you progress across the expression from left to right. So as you start on the left, any operation of multiplication or, you divis or division that you come across needs to be solved before you move on to the next step. So once all of those operations have been completed, you then move to the final step, the fourth step, which is add and subtract, again, from left to right as you progress across your expression. Now that you know this prescribed method, you can solve some order of operations with whole numbers. Here we have a couple of very simple expressions to start off with. And if it helps, go ahead and write out PEMDAS on the side of your paper or somewhere that you're looking at so you have it as a reference point. And if you want drawing a line so you make sure you're understanding this is a four step process. So to begin here, we have two operations, multiplication and subtraction. Which needs to go first? Multiplication comes before subtraction, so we solve that first. 2 times 9 gives me 18, then I take 16 away, and the solution to that is 2. Then we go down to our second example, and we notice we have parentheses, and we have an operation occurring within them. So that is going to be where I need to start. 6 minus 4 leaves me with 2. Now the parentheses don't disappear, they're just now representing multiplication because we can use the dot, we can use less often the multiplication x symbol, or we can use parentheses. Any number touching the outside of the first parenthesis means that that value is multiplying by the number inside of the parenthesis. Okay. When we look at this then, we have an addition and a multiplication. Which do we solve first? Multiplication comes before addition. 2 times 2 gives us 4. And then we can add 2 to that simplified 4 to get a final solution of 6. 
Now, if we didn't have the order of operations and we just operated from left to right, I would have done two plus two to get four, and then six minus four to get two, and gone four times two to get eight. But since this didn't follow the order of operations, it's not the correct solution. This expression definitely amps it up a little bit. Um, so again, if we look at all this, we could get really overwhelmed. We don't want to get overwhelmed. We have a method of solving. Anything that's not on the step you're solving can be ignored. We start with, are there parentheses with an operation that can be simplified? Yes, I have that. So I can ignore everything else and just deal with the parentheses. Five minus three gives me two. And there is an exponent on it, so I'm gonna keep the parentheses as an organizational symbol. And then write everything else in around it. All right, parentheses are gone. Now do I have any exponents? Yes, I do. I had the squaring of whatever the parenthesis value simplified to. That was a 2. 2 squared means a 2 times a 2, which is 4. Now that I have nothing touching the front of it but the plus sign, no other symbol going on, I can go ahead and drop the parentheses. So 9 divided by 3 plus 4. Next, I have division and addition. After the exponent comes multiplication and division. So division comes before addition. I need to solve that first. 9 divided by 3 is 3 plus 4. My final solution is going to be 7. Here again, we have a situation where we could get very overwhelmed if we don't know where to prioritize and what step to focus on. Here we see there are now brackets. Parentheses actually involve three different types of symbols. We have the braces, which are squiggly, the brackets, which are more boxy, and our regular parentheses, which are the, just the rounded curves. These say solve what's ever inside of the parentheses before we then solve whatever's inside the brackets, before we solve whatever's inside the braces, and before we solve whatever's outside of all of that. So we can actually go through the order of operations numerous times on the exact same expression, and that's okay. Again, it's just prioritizing what step am I on before looking out any further. Here, I see parentheses. That means, and I have parentheses and brackets. I need to solve what's in parentheses before I worry about what's in the brackets. Inside the parentheses is multiplication and subtraction. Multiplication comes before subtraction, so I worry about that first. Two times four is going to be eight minus six leaves me with a two. Now I had a three in front of the parentheses, so I need to keep that parentheses around the two to show that that three multiplies by what that simplified to. Okay, and then I like to keep rewriting it. It's not a requirement, but it helps me stay organized and not accidentally drop a number or an operation. Then within the braces, or sorry, the bracket, I need to go through the order of operation. I have addition and I have multiplication. Multiplication comes first. This becomes a six plus a five. And we still are basically treating our brackets like parentheses. I'm organizing it and keeping it separate from what's outside. 5 plus 6 gives me 11. And because the 4 was touching right up against the bracket, it means that 4 is multiplying by whatever this simplified to. So I can keep the bracket or I can go ahead and replace them with parentheses because it's still, still just saying I multiplied that 4 by the 11 that I got, and 4 times 11 is going to give me 44 as a final answer. The final thing to look at is how exponents change values around. 
we see here a 6 plus 2 inside of parentheses with an exponent of 2 and a 6 squared plus a 2 squared. We might immediately think, oh, well, the same numbers are getting squared, so it's going to be the same answer. But the order of operation can change that. So if we look up here, I need to add before evaluating the exponent. 6 plus 2 gives me 8. So then the 8 is squared. 8 times 8 turns into uh, 8 times 8 turns into 64. All right. Here I have 6 squared, which means 6 times 6, 6 times 6, which equals 36. Here I have 2 squared, which means a 2 times a 2, which is a 4. And if I add those two together, I get 40. Because I was squaring smaller values, rather than multiplying a larger number by itself to create a larger value, these are going to stay smaller and it's not going to be worth the same amount.